Hello, my friends. So here I am in a studio in Los Angeles, got my wires crossed and mixed up. So I had some time here and I thought, let's uh, do this Facebook Live. So uh, this is all in preparation for uh, the webinar that's going to happen next Tuesday and Wednesday called Eat Way and Suffer Less, Three Steps to Overcome Emotional Eating. So I want you to uh, register for the webinar if you are an emotional eater or if you're just curious about it. Maybe you are, maybe you're not so sure. But if you have extra pounds on your body and you are curious about how well, emotional eating might be adding to that weight, then I really would love to have you sign up. So today I wanted to talk about emotions. Uh, what are emotions and uh, where do they come from? And uh, I want to break it down into two different things so that we can determine the difference between a sensation and an emotion. So we say a sensation starts in the body and then it moves to our mind. So for instance, hunger, your stomach starts to growl, you notice that, you go, ah, hunger, identify it. The same thing with pain. So you have the sensation in your body, you feel it, and you go, ah, pain, and there you, you sometimes then your thoughts will continue to spin out about it, but basically it starts in your body. Now emotions are different in the sense because they actually start in our mind. So something happens, a circumstance, and then we think about uh, it, we, it registers, uh, and then we have a reaction. And that reaction could be anger, it could be sadness, it could be shame. And generally you can look at any emotion and, and visit the body, what's happening in your body. So whereas the sensation starts in your body, the emotion also has a big part in your body. So of course if we have this sensation of anger or sadness, the last thing we want to do is feel it. We don't really want to feel it and so what we do is we overeat so that we can numb ourselves to it and distract ourselves to it. I have a distraction here right now as a matter of fact. So I wanted to give an example, I was trying to think of a good example of how we can look at this idea of an emotion from a thought. And I was remembering uh, the, an interview, there, there was a film about the, uh, Philippe Petit who walked across the World Trade Center. Now here's a man who looks, he's, he's at the top of the Trade Center, he sees a wire and his thoughts are, ah, this is what I've always wanted to do. I want to walk on the wire, I want to fly, I want to be above the people and be one with it. Now, I'm at the top of the World Trade Center, two feet on the top of the ground, and I'm thinking, oh my God, it's really high up here. Get me out of here. The last thing I could even imagine is how anyone can put their feet on a wire and walk across the World Trade Center. It is crazy to me. But my mind and Philip Petit minds are just thinking two different things. So if we can understand the power that our minds have in our life and how we eat or respond or don't want to feel our emotions, then we have the beginning of understanding how we can overcome emotional eating. So I want you to uh, sign up for the webinar for next week and we'll go into details. I'll share with you three steps to overcome emotional eating and uh, I look forward to that. And tomorrow I'll talk about thought errors and how simple, what simple sounding thoughts actually are very bad for you. So uh, thanks again and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.